I talk to Murphy. Thank you, last count, Corla. As the COVID situation was developing, I voted to give the government these special emergency powers. I did so in good faith, in the belief that the powers would be used in good faith. Unfortunately, I believe that there have been too many examples of these restrictions being unnecessarily draconian and going beyond what I would consider to be reasonable. There has be, they have, this has shown on many occasions, not least when the Minister for Health said that priests wouldn't be punished for saying Mass, only for that very thing to happen just a few weeks later. You still haven't apologised for misleading the doll on the issue, Minister. Another example is when the power has been used to close parks and other public places. I am fortunate enough to have a home in the country with a garden. Many people in city centres do not have the same space and therefore the local park was very important to them. The government banned people from using parks and many public amenities were closed and we're still closing off certain areas in the city. It's madness. A third example of these powers being used in bad faith is when things like cancer screenings and other treatments and services were stopped. How many missed or delayed cancer diagnoses have resulted from these restrictions? How many mental health issues have been caused by the restrictions? How many suicides were caused by the restrictions? It seems that the powers that be didn't mind what you died from as long as it wasn't from COVID. Was this a proportionate response? Was it really necessary to use these powers to stop people visiting family or to stop people from meeting each other for a chat. We endured the longest lockdown in Europe, with contradictory and nonsensical rules being implemented. Adults have been treated like children. The nanny state has wrapped us in cotton wool. People who were skeptical about the lockdown approach were cast aside with ridicule whilst the professional curtain twitchers and scaremongers were given a soapbox at almost every possible opportunity. We have a virus which attacks the unhealthiest, yet the government used the emergency powers to close down opportunities for people to exercise and stay healthy. The government have used these powers to dictate to people when they can and cannot hug their relatives and have made people afraid to visit a friend or relative living alone. We can't turn on our state broadcaster without hearing almost constant doom and gloom. The situation with the pandemic has changed dramatically. We have a vaccination program. Most vulnerable people have been vaccinated. We must allow people to get back to normal. Why aren't we? Does the government not trust the vaccines and the vaccine rollout program? Now is an appropriate time for the government to change their approach to people. The approach to date has been to dictate to people and to talk down to people. Yet it seems we're still going to impose stupid guidelines, such as the proposed 105 limit on visits to pubs and restaurants. I'd ask people to bear in mind they are only guidelines. Basically, a guideline which encourages people to go on the move around to multiple pubs. If an individual pub or restaurant wants to impose some time limit, then fair enough but it should be left up to each to decide for themselves depending on their own circumstance. The attitude of government is that we know best how you should live your life. We must move away from dictating. Provide the information and even advise people, but let people decide for themselves. We saw fabulous performances in the Gulf last week by Shane Lowry and Pori Carrington in front of 10,000 spectators in the USA. And while in Europe there were 7,500 people in the grandstands of the Monaco Grand Prix, 10,000 at a Premier League soccer match, 3,500 indoors at the Eurovision Song Contest, this coming weekend 500 spectators will be allowed at National League games in Northern Ireland. And only a few days ago, the Down Junior Camogie team travelled to Timon in County Wexford to play a National League game. They were allowed to travel down on a bus, yet this coming weekend, when the Wexford team travels north to play Armagh, they cannot travel together on a bus. Is COVID different here than anywhere else, or are we allowing fear and scaremongering to dominate? Months ago, I saw that the government were happy enough just to keep level five for as long as they could get away with it. 
I called for a plan on how to get us out of level five. This included antigen testing. Antigen testing is forming a key part in other countries' reopening plans. Yet recently, a member of NEFET compared antigen testing to snake oil treatment. It's no wonder with attitudes like that, that the government haven't seen a place for antigen testing, and that needs to change. Professor Michael Mina, Professor of Epidemiology at Harvard University, explained last week how antigen testing can be more useful than PCR testing, particularly for identifying when somebody is infectious. Yet here, the government are dragging their heels on it. COVID-19 has introduced many new phases into everyday conversation. One of these phases, used regularly by government, is that we will follow the science. It seems to me that the government is following the science when it suits and ignoring it when it might leave egg on their face. For example, we had about 258,000 cases of COVID identified since all of this began. Only about 300 of them were associated with outdoor activity. Similar results have shown in studies across the world. Has the government's approach changed based on this science? We're still keeping people from outdoor activities. We still haven't allowed outdoor dining to resume. These things are happening across the world, but we are still behind the curve. We continue to hear scaremongering about new variants, even though the vaccines have been shown to work against them. We need to trust people to make decisions for themselves and to get back to normality. We are being asked to extend emergency powers until November and possibly beyond. They have been used to place draconian restrictions on people's freedom. They should only be in place when absolutely necessary. The test of these restrictions is, are they necessary? Are they proportionate? And what are the consequences? I have weighed up the consequences that we have seen over the last year and see the vast majority of our vulnerable people have been vaccinated. Therefore, I have come to the conclusion that allowing the government to continue with these restrictions indefinitely would no longer be necessary or proportionate, and I will be voting no. Thank you.